hello everyone welcome back to my channel plan 3d tutorial and this video is the second part of our structural modeling video and if you haven't watched the first part i would request you to first watch the first part and then you can continue with the second part in the first part i had explained about all the modeling of this structure like modeling the members grid railings staircase and etc and in this video we'll be learning about how to modify the structural members using the commands present in this menu bar as you can see in the screen so let us begin this video without wasting any time before beginning with this video i'll explain you about how to model a ladder in plan 3d because in our part one i had missed to explain about the ladder modeling so i'll just explain you now so to model a ladder you have to click on the ladder then it is asking me to give the start point see the ladder you can either start from the top or from the bottom i'll just start from the top now i'll just select a random point and now I want my ladder to end at the Z coordinate of this point that is at 0. Okay. Now it is asking me to specify the directional distance point. So I want my ladder in this direction that is minus X. So I'll just give a distance of 25 in this direction and you can see my ladder has been created. I'll just put it in wireframe and show you. See, this is my ladder and the 25 mm distance is from this edge where I had selected till the center of the ladder. So the modeling of ladder is as simple as that. I'll just move this railing to the end of this ladder so that we have access to enter the structure. Now you can see the ladder is created. I'll just match the color and this is done. So I hope you understand about ladder modeling and now we will begin with our member modifying part using this commands. So to explain you about the modifying a member I had created separately a small structure here. So coming to our first command that is lengthen member. When I click on the lengthen member here it is asking me delta and total. Delta is used to extend or decrease the length of the member by a certain value. So first I'll click on delta and then give some value. For example, I want to increase the length of this beam by 500. So I'll just give a value of 500 and enter. And now I have to select the member. I'll select this member. As you can see here, the length of this beam has increased by 500. In the same manner, I'll click on delta. And now I want to decrease the length of this member. So I'll just give minus 500 and enter and click on this beam. As you can see, the length of the member is decreased by 500 and it has come to its original point. So this is the use of delta. And next one more option we have total. When I click on total, it is asking me specify a total value. Total value is like when I enter the value here, it will consider the whole length of the beam for that value. For example, if I give the value as 10,000 and select this beam, what it is doing is it is not increasing the size of the beam by 10,000 rather it is making the whole length of the beam as 10,000 here if I measure and show you you can see here x value is 10,000 that is the length of this beam made as 10,000 so again I will change the total value to 6,000 and select this beam and, and you can see this length is now 6,000 so this is the use of length and member and now our next command is cutback member. To explain cutback member, let me just copy this beam here. When I click on the cutback member, it is asking me to select the limiting member, that is the cutting member. So I want this as my cutting member. Okay. And next it is asking me select the structural member to cut. So I want this member to be cut. Here what happens is the member to be cut will be trimmed till the last edge of the cutting member on which it is lying. Here the condition is that the member should be lying on the cutting member. So here uh, once again I will show you. It is asking me select the limiting member that is the cutting member. This is the cutting member and this is the member to be cut. So this is the last edge and it has trimmed till this point. Okay. So here you can see down it is cut both. Let's see what happens when I click on cut both and select cut both and select both both the beams you can see for this beam to be cut the last edge of this beam has been taken as the cutting cutting line and for this beam 
the last edge that is here on the right side it has taken as the cutting line so i'll just undo this and here we have one more option like give gap so when i select gap it is asking me to give some value i'll just give us 25 and now i'll select the cutting member and next the member to be cut here you can see here there is a gap that is the value which we have given 25 so this was about cutback members and this gap is basically used to show the weld gap so the next command here we have is miter cut member so when i click on miter cut member it is asking me select the first structural member so i'll select this as my first structural member and next it is asking me select the second structural member i'll select this as my second structural member as you can see it has created a miter bend here and this is the use of miter bend and one more option we have in the miter bend is align the edges to know about align edges option let me show you in the front view that's okay so i'll just copy these two beams here so that you understand it better okay see i'll just give a miter bend first here you can see that see this edge is a bigger one and this is a smaller one and these two are not aligned now so when i click on aligned that is miter cut and i'll select align edges so now when i select these two beams see these two edges has been aligned so this is the use of align edges and the gap option as we had seen in the previous command uh, that is cut back member command uh, remains the same so for example if i give the gap as 25 and select these two members you can see that there is a 25 mm gap but when you give the gap this align edges option won't be considered because while giving a gap align member option will be discarded and you cannot give that option so this is how you make use of miter cut members and the next command what we have here is trim member see trim member and extend member both have the same commands but the only difference is in trim member the length of the member is reduced or trimmed and in the extend member it is the length of the member is increased or in other words extended so what i'll do is i'll just explain you the trim member and the same method you can follow for the extend member option okay so i'll put it in the top view of the same here okay so when i click on the trim member here we are getting some options like it is asking me which method do you want to trim the member so first we'll go from the bottom let me first explain you about the two points method i'll select the two points method and click on ok now it is asking me select the first point see i want to trim this member this vertical member from the center of this horizontal member so what i'll do is i'll just draw a line that is the first point i'll select this center and the next point i can select anywhere randomly either here or i can go till here wherever i'll just end the second point here i'll just explain you once more what i have done is selected two points selected the center of this beam and just clicked somewhere here so my cutting edge has been created from the center of this beam so now i have to select the part which i want to trim so i want this smaller part to be trimmed so i'll select this part this edge see the member has been trimmed till this center of this uh, horizontal member in the same way in the same way when i create the same line here and i want this longer part to be trimmed so what i have to do is i have to select this edge as you can see the longer part has been trimmed and we have the shorter part so this is how uh, we use the two point method by using a single line as a cutting edge and next we have is three point three points method is basically like creating a plane to cut a member so when i click on three points and select ok and now i'll just put it in the front view okay so i have a single vertical member and three horizontal members and now i'll click on trim member and three points method and click on ok now it is asking me to specify the origin origin of what origin of the plane which i want to consider as a cutting plane so i want this center of this beam to be specified as the origin and now it is asking me specify point on the x-axis 
where I want my x-axis. I want my x-axis in this direction. So I'll click somewhere over here. And next it is asking me specify the point on the x-y plane. That is this was the x and I want my y plane in upper direction. I'll just randomly select here. So my imaginary plane has been created from the center. That is from here. So if you see here, what happens here is, here is my plane and whichever beam is crossing this plane will be trimmed when I select the respective member. So for example, I want to trim this plane and select this. As you can see, it has trimmed my plane for the center in the same way this beam. And if I want in this direction, I'll select from here. So the basic difference between three points and two points is in two point, we use a single line as a cutting edge. Whereas in a three point, we use a full plane as a cutting edge. So in a two line, the beam to be trimmed has to lie on the line which we are considering as the cutting edge, which we draw after selecting the two point method. So two point can be used to trim the members which are lying on the same elevation. Whereas when you give the three point method, it is creating an imaginary plane so that you can trim different members at different elevation, but the member has to cross that plane. So I hope you understand the difference between two point and three point. But if you still have any doubts, you can comment in this comment section. So I'll just clarify you either in the next video or in the same comment section if possible. So now let us go to the next method. And the next method, this is also related to planes. So first we'll talk about WCS plane. See, when I click on XY, you can see it here XY of WCS, that is World Coordinate System Plane and click on OK. It is asking me, select the member to be trimmed. As you can see, first I have to change it to WCS. Here you can see, this is my WCS plane. This is the X axis and this is the Y axis. So my X5 plane lies in the horizontal and this is the origin. So for example, in any case, if my beam is crossing that plane, that is the XY plane of the WCS system. And I'll, when I click on trim object and select the XY WCS and click on OK and I have to select the beam. Here you can see it has trimmed to the XY plane of the WCS system. So this is the use of WCS system. In the previous case, we had created an imaginary plane, but here it is taking the standard plane which is available in the WCS system. So I hope you understood that. So coming to the next point, that is XY UCS. Before using the XY UCS method, you have to create a random plane. I will use the UCS command to create a plane. See my origin, my WCS plane is here. That is at the bottom. Here you can see. So I'll now I'll create a UCS plane at the top. So I want my plane at the mid of this beam at the top. And now it is asking me specify the X axis. I want my X axis in the east direction and my Y axis I want in the north direction. So now my plane has been created here. So let me just extend this a little bit. So now when I click on this XY UCS method and OK and then select the beam to be trimmed. You can see it is taking the XY plane of the UCS system coordinates which I had created, not the world coordinate system which were here at the bottom. So I hope you understood the use of uh, UCS system. And next we have this names UCS. Before that I will change this to WCS and again I will just extend this beam so I will be able to explain it to you. So when I click on trim to plane, and select names UCS and click on OK. See here I have set my coordinate system as WCS and I have selected the names UCS here. So when I click on the beam, you can see it has taken the same UCS system which I had created. I'll explain you this XY UCS. Again to show you, I'll trim this beam. See it is taking this top plane as the cutting edge. So what happens in names UCS is the plane which you had created previously will be taken as the cutting edge. So the function of this is uh, you did not uh, create the plane one more time. You so will just use the previous plane which you had created by using the UCS command. So this was everything about the functions of this trim to plane command. So as I have used the trim to plane command, you can use the same method for extend to plane command. There is no difference except that in the previous command it is used to shorten the length of the beam whereas here you can use these planes or lines or points 
to extend the length of the beam. So I just leave it to you and still if you have any doubts let me know in the comment section so that I can explain you in the next video. Okay so now let us learn about this command uh, which is cut member edges. See one condition for cut member edges is the member which you want to cut. For example in this case I want this three members to be cut till the edge of this beam. The condition here is this members end point should lie at the center of this beam then only it will accept the command so here the end of this beams lies at the center of this uh, horizontal beam so now when i click on this command it is asking me to specify the gap i want the gap as zero and now it is asking me select the structural members to cut it is directly asking me to select the members which you want to shorten so i will select this member this this and click on enter now you can see it has taken the edge of the members on which these, were, these three were lying as the cutting edge. So this is the use of this command that is cut member edges. So now let us learn about the last command that is restore member. As the name suggests it just restores the member to its original position. For example this members original position was here. So when I click on restore member it comes to the, it comes to the original position that is to the position where it was before before trimming or modifying by using the other commands as well so whatever position was the original position of this member will be restored by using the restore command so guys this is all about this modifying method of structural element and if you have any doubts you can comment in the comment section and if you like this video then please subscribe to my channel and please like my video so that this reaches to many other people who are searching for this type of videos in plan 3d and if you have any suggestions for me to anything to improve in my videos then you can comment in the comment section and i'll definitely consider your advice and thank you for watching this video i'll catch you up in the next video till then take care and goodbye